Hi guys, KD2ETP here, uh, another quick video. I just bought a new antenna about two weeks ago. It's a double bazooka. Interesting antenna. I got it up. I replaced the, uh, I had an end fed up and um, so far I've been having good luck with it. How it, you know, actually performs in comparison to the other, you know, hard to say without having them both hooked up at the same time and using them together. But uh, I had pretty good success with it so far. I used it on the worldwide phone contest. Um, what was that last weekend, I believe? And I made, I don't know, 50, 56 contacts. I'll show you the list here. Okay. I'm not sure if you can see that, but whatever. Um, anyways. Um, It was, uh, it's working out pretty well. Uh, I think it's a pretty good antenna. It seems to be holding up pretty well out there. It's been windy here and I haven't had much issue with it. Although the bands have been in really good shape, so it's hard to tell the performance on it. So I'll keep testing it and, um, give you more information as it goes along, but a little background on it. I know people always say that, um, you know, it's from the forties and, um, a guy from MIT, which is correct. However, what I found by looking it up online, let me see here, was that uh, actually the original design uh, patent was in 1937. And uh, I'll show you that. Uh, oh boy, you can't see it. But anyways, if you look up the... Um, uh, the design for the bazooka antenna and you do a little extra research you'll find that the actual original patent was um, submitted in 1937 and he actually got the patent for it in 1939 so uh, <laughs> different than what uh, most people say about it and also the other th interesting thing about it it was actually patented as a vertical antenna not a um, a horizontally um, a, uh, a horizontal antenna so and like I said I don't, I don't think you can see it here but it's too bright or something but anyways if like I said if you look up the patent number which is two one eight four seven two nine two one eight four seven two nine uh, you'll get come to a, a page and um, it shows the breakdown this is the it'll show you the original patent um, which is interesting. It's an interesting design. Um, now, I've been trying to look up where the double bazooka came from, which is the uh, style of antenna that I purchased and what you see most of the time. And you see, I got that sheet on that right now. This is the one that I bought. I'm uh, in no way affiliated with radio waves or anything, but uh, that's the one that I found online. And, uh, what was it? I don't know, I think I paid, like, 75 bucks for it or something. Put it up, it went up pretty easy. I already had, uh, um, a rope in the tree. So I lowered the other antenna, hooked that one on, pulled that one up, and the other side is on my house, um, up at the peak. So it's, it's almost a flat top. It's running a little bit of a sloper. So far, so good. I'm going to buy another one, I think to uh, bring out in the field. Ideally, what I'd like to do is get um, that, um, an off-center fed dipole. I have a 40 meter um, regular dipole. I don't know, I think I have about six uh, wire antennas and I'm gonna try and find the right spot, get them all set up and try and do a test with all the different antennas. Uh, so they can be kind of side-by-side, side, a side-by-side side comparison, let's say. And obviously, the antennas, we don't want them side-by-side, uh, side, but um, within um, a relative distance of each other so that the characteristics should be the same. So I look forward to doing that, although I think I'm going to wait for the warm weather to do that. It's still a little rough up here in New York. Um, not much else I could say about the antenna. Uh, like I said, it's been working great. I like it so far. 
Um, as far as performance, I think, uh, you know, they say that um, it's supposed to take out some of the noise. And ironically enough, this is a 40 meter antenna, but I've been able to tune it on pretty much every band, but um, even on 80, actually. Uh, but um, they say that it's supposed to cancel some of the background noise, which Ironically enough, I think on 20 meters, it seems to be a little less, a few S units less. I live in a, um, a residential area on the edge of the city, so the noise floor here on like 40 meters, for instance, is typically a, a solid S8 or S9. So I was hoping that it would drop that down a little bit. It doesn't seem to have really done anything for that, although um, I noticed that I don't get the static crashes that I would get off the... Uh, the end fed that I had up there, as well as the off center fed dipole that I had up, strung up in the same position. So um, that's one notable uh, uh, benefit. And whether it's the antenna or just whatever was happening to give me those static crashes, uh, I'm not sure. I have not had the same issue though since I've hung that antenna up. And like I said, on 20 meters, it seems to have dropped the noise floor down. Because on 20 meters, it was about the same here where I live. So um, now I'm down to like typically an S3, which is great, you know, and sometimes even an S1. So I'm not sure, again, if that's the uh, just the atmospheric conditions or the antenna, but we'll keep an eye on it and I'll see if it holds consistent um, through. And then later on when I do the test, uh, the side-by-side -side test with the other antennas, um, I guess that'll give us a better idea of the noise suppression on those. But uh, just a quick little video on uh, the double bazooka and a little history on it. Uh, I think that uh, there's a lot of people, or uh, several other videos on the, on the double bazooka, but the, really the original bazooka antenna was a vertically polarized antenna that the patent was on. And like I said, it was not in the early 40s, uh, like, uh, most of the videos claim it was actually 1937 was when he originally filed uh, Bailey originally filed the patent and in 1939 he actually got the uh, uh, the patent on it so uh, just a look uh, a brief history about it uh, you can look it up and research it more as you know on my channel I try not to get too much into the technical end on um, a lot of things I'll save that for the guys who really know um, I can understand it when I read it. I'm not sure I can convey that kind of stuff on the um, <laughs> on these videos to you guys. So I try to stay away from that and allow the, the people who know more to um, explain it more appropriately. But uh, I'll have some more testing on this and uh, probably do uh, uh, you know more videos. I've been trying to get out and do more videos. Uh, well, not get out, but I've been trying to put out more videos. And uh, it's been working. I've had a lot of time lately, which is rare for me. And I'm sure that's not going to last. But while I uh, do have the time, I'll continue to put out more of these videos. So um, that being said, yeah, look up that antenna. It's interesting if you can find the page. And I will try and get a link to that page or at least give you the uh, website that I went to. Because um, currently that's just saved on my, the P, uh, PDF of the antenna is saved on my um, tablet. And again, like I said, I'm having computer issues, this computer and whatnot. All my computers seem to be having issues right now. So I'll say 73 for now, KD2ETP.